Joanna, and I am going to nerd out with you about systems because you are ready to work on your business and not working for it as much anymore. Um, let's get started here. So you've heard about these things called systems and every business book makes it very clear that they are a crucial part of any successful business. Um, so systems are essentially your golden ticket out of owning your job or your job owner owning you, however you want to look at it, and reaching that goal of becoming an absentee owner that's where your business runs without you. Um, and it's just paying you to stay home and be awesome or to travel or to do whatever you want. Um, but it's just making you consistent money. Um, FYI, it took me literally a year to figure out systems. So when I found this screenshot, I was like, oh, okay. Um, I'll get to that story later. Uh, I'm a slow catcher on her, I guess, but let me tell you, well, boy, when you figure it out, it will be great. Okay, so who am I anyway? I'm a person who has spent the last few years really since 2016 was a real turning point for me um, on refining my business system so that it runs without me. My business is up in Portland. I live in Salem. It's about 50 miles away. It's an hour through traffic that I don't want to drive to do, so I don't. So I've built my business so that it runs without me. So, and you can do it too. Um, so I just had a baby. Here's my little baby. And I'm kind of to that point where I'm ready to do something again, but my business doesn't need me. So my business is Clean Affinity up in Portland. Um, so I'm going to get into this, cons this consulting thing. So why not? I've got some good ideas, I think, and somebody might get something out of it. So hopefully you get something. Um, so because I'm getting into the consulting thing, I've started yet another cleaning focused Facebook group and I'm calling it the Automatic Mastermind. Okay, Automade. Um, here we go. Here's the group here. Look, no one likes this. No one's in the group. Wah, wah. It's brand new. I literally just put this together. Um, but it's where we can get together and we can share systems and get feedback from each other and stuff. And my first focus, it will be on a training system. I'm here doing this talk about how to write your training system more or less. Um, so we'll work through that and we'll kind of see where, how things go. And I'll, maybe I'll do some of my other systems. Like I got a lot of automations and a cool website estimator that I really like. Um, anyway, where was I? So in the group, I will also be sharing my favorite training video. This is my never ever's video. This is like how to, how to get fired in a jiffy. Um, this video will be free. Every, anyone can look at it. You can share it. I don't, I'm, I'm not too worried about that, but just, you know, this is the freebie. Uh, and hopefully it'll give you an idea of what you can include in your training system. It doesn't, I'm not at all saying that you need to go have custom videos made for you because that's expensive. Um, this is like literally the third reincarnation of my training system, my whole entire system. And I had videos made. Um, I actually got really lucky and stumbled across this kid named Bryce, who was like 17 or 18 at the time, um, but he was this homeschooled kid. I got a real soft spot for homeschool kids because they are hard workers. Um, and so he made this series of videos. He like he shot them with me. He edited them. He put them all together. It's like an hour long. Anyway, and he did it for it was super affordable. Like I way overpaid him as like a tip because he totally outdid himself with these. Cool. So here's the Facebook group. So go ahead and, and join this, this group, okay? Because all everything that I'm talking about will be linked into the group. So that's where you can find it. And give me your follow-up questions for the talk. So write down your questions and I'd love to hear them later. Anyway, so 
I was here talking about how lucky I was and my soft spot for homeschool people. So let's use this as a segue into another spot about another story about me getting lucky and a soft spot for um, homeschool people. So I started Clean Affinity in 2010, and it took me an embarrassing amount of time to pull myself together and really figure out how to run a business. So I'm do I've made up for lost time at least I think. So I have wanted to quit. I, before I had figured it out, I had wanted to quit and just give my business away basically and go get a real job hundreds of times. I am sure you have been there as well. And it all it took was for me to realize that I'm unemployable. Like I don't work well for other people. I nine to five doesn't really work for me. Anyway, so <laughs> just realizing I'm unemployable and that I would absolutely hate working for anybody else and just put my head down and get back to it. So it was about three years in, in 2016. Remember I had that screenshot of the e-myth here? That's when I bought it in 2015. So it took me a, a year to wrap my head around it because it was like my New Year's resolution for 2016 that I was like, if this business doesn't work on its own or with less than like eight hours of work a week from me or have be at a point where it's optimistic like we're that close then I was going to <laughs> just give the business away I was going to make that decision on my son's second birthday so this is my son Lysander he's now five um well, that's my husband so this was in 2016 when I had one two three four five employees and my general manager, my admin person. Um, this was my this is my cousin, and this is just how stretched we were for size. We have 18 people cleaning now, but at the time I couldn't even squeak nine out. I had to throw the baby in there. Um, so where was I? Looking at my notes here. Anyway, so this is Dream Employee. She was she was a homeschooled person. Okay, she had this great attitude, super independent, hardworking, just the best work ethic. And she had come to me with experience where she had worked at another cleaning company for years. And she was a trainer for their company, which was exactly what I needed. Okay, so when I found her, I honestly had thought I had won the lottery or something just to find her because. She made me understand what I could expect from employees. She really set the bar high for me, and I didn't t accept anything less from then on. Um, so here's the thing about me. I suck at training. I do not have the patience to sit and watch someone clean for hours, let alone clean horribly or slowly. Like, ah, I just can't do it. So I was at a huge disadvantage for getting my business out of this this wallow of despair more or less because I needed, I needed to hire people that, and I needed to get them trained so that they would do a good job and not piss off the clients. Okay. That was what I was doing. I was just hemorrhaging employees and hemorrhaging clients. I had no idea what I was doing. So I needed that time and space more or less to focus, to, to not be cleaning and to focus on building the systems and running the business and just making it work for once because it just wasn't really working. So thankfully this dream employee, she came and she gave me the time and she gave me the space so that I could write the actual training system. I literally did like two hours of training with her to just show her like, this is how we do things. So then she trained people. She trained people that way and it wasn't necessarily the way I, it was by far, not, not at all my final training system at all. Um, but it doesn't matter. Quality got better, speed got better. So, well, so this is the point of the talk, I guess, is I am going to walk you through my, sy my systems learning curve, more or less, to help you wrap your brain around what to include in your training system, the like how to write it, how to organize it, how to present it to new hires. I want you to begin to think in systems so like I said it took me a year of obsessing it was literally obsessing it was like what the hell is a system anyway so 
took me a year to catch on. So, and since I've already conquered that learning curve, I'm gonna help you level up right now and give you the KPIs, which is the key performance indicator that you should be watching to ensure that your system is making a measurable difference in your business. It also tells you what you might need to fix in your system if it's not right the first time. Nothing's ever right the first time. You just have to do it. We just have to get it done. Okay, so, oh, did I show you this? Random. This is actually just a sampling of my training video here. La -di da never ever, don't let pets out. Otherwise the pet's gonna get, oh no. Okay, sorry, my favorite video in the series. Huh. Okay, so, Here's, I wrote this out twice, actually. I did it once as a Word document and the other time as an Excel spreadsheet because I love to Excel. Um, I taught myself Excel so that I could level up my business. Um, so I'm gonna go through this one first. I wrote it first, I don't know. I'm just gonna give you some ideas here. The idea of, of this exercise is just to help you engage your brain to be thinking completely and thoroughly and writing that shit down okay it's not a system well it is a system you have systems anyway it doesn't matter it doesn't count until it's written down doesn't matter if it's on a napkin or something but it needs to be written down and this will help your learning curve a lot okay let's see what i've got here i'm gonna put the files for this in the automatic mastermind group same for the link to <laughs> love this video so anyway um sorry oh before we get into this though it would probably be helpful for me to give you the cliff notes of my training system as it is now this is after many reincarnations, okay? So this is what we are doing right now with 18 full-time employees and three trainers. Okay, so when I started to write this training system, I was looking around online for this training videos and stuff that were available. Pfft, no good. I mean, I was just really disappointed with them and because I was looking for something that I could take someone off the street that had never done cleaning before. Maybe their mom never even made them clean and teach them how to clean. Um, so it was the stupid stuff. Like, how do you fold, hold a microfiber? Like, as I started, as I worked on this training system, I realized that I really needed to teach them the stupid stuff. The, like, basic fundamentals that because I was doing it all the time, I was like, why do I have to tell them this? This is like, like idiot proof, right? Anyway, so I realized that I had to do all this. So I literally wrote my system for absolutely green people to under, to learn how to clean and to learn how to clean quickly and thoroughly with high quality within two weeks. They get two weeks of training. Okay, let me find my notes here again. So the closest thing I did find that I did like were the Debbie Sardone speed cleaning videos, video. The one hour one was pretty okay. Um, that one I, I thought was the closest, but it was still things like using a feather duster. Like, uh, uh, I can't use feather dusters. It's just not for me. And I have a super minimalistic bucket and equipment that we use. So having, we use microfibers for everything and we use a few cleaning products for everything. And that's how we, that's how we roll. Okay. <sighs> so like I was saying, I was, I was, I built my training system to train people who are completely green. And I have simplified all my rules into my 15 rules for efficiency, which are the fundamental techniques where it's like, it can be applied in any situation and it helps with that decision-making process for someone who hasn't worked through that yet. Um, so, yeah, so I did have training videos made and they are, they do have a heavy emphasis on the fundamentals as well as my 15 efficiency rules. Um, but anyway, 
here is our training program. Oh, no, that's not it. This is it. That's not it. This is it. Okay, here is my training manager system. So this is what my training managers are given with all the information on how to train people. Um, it's basically the next level for what I'm trying to walk you through here. So what we did was we broke our training down, everything that they need to know down into 10 units of sorts. Um, and there's like a quiz for every day. So it's two weeks of training, that's 10 working days. And there's a quiz at the end of every day to make sure that the trainer, the trainee learned what they needed to learn that day. Okay. So uh, we've tried a few different ways of doing things, but this is the way that we are doing it now. Um, some people like to be really soft on them at the start because they need them to stick around. Some people are really hard on them because they want them to realize the reality of the physical nature of the job. And ours is kind of somewhere in the middle. Kind of probably erring to the side of soft, but anyway. Um, so what we do is the first day... Oh man, this is like, this is so long. So our first day, we demo the, how to do cobwebs, kitchen, and bathrooms. So essentially demoing the first half of the house. And then we dump them into bathrooms for the rest of the day and for them to figure that out. Day two, we dump them, well, we don't dump them. We put them into kitchens, okay? Because kitchens require most the most efficiency and speed and quality. Okay, so day two, throw them into kitchens. Uh, let's see here. Day three, we do dusting and spot cleaning. Day four is vacuuming and mopping. Um, by day five, we have them do a house on their own with the training manager watching them like a hawk, stopping them if they have any bad habits and correcting them. Okay, so the first week is really focused on what and how we do it, like what's expected, what's the quality, what's the the, the pattern of movement. Um, and then the second week is about the speed and refining of the efficiency so that you can get that optimal balance between quality yet getting the job done quickly. Um, and then on day six, the first day of their second week of training, the de trainer demos a house for them again um, so that they can, now that they've been told all these things, they can see it in action again being done correctly. Um, and then days seven, eight, nine, ten are making sure that they are fast yet still have that impeccable quality as well. Um, again, there's a quiz for every day and it's just so that we are sure that one, the trainers are telling the trainees what they need to know and two, the trainees are actually like, it's sticking. Okay. Um, so this is our training manager manual. This is the how to train someone instruction book that we wrote. It is 51 pages long. Your first system is not going to be 51 pages long. Okay. You need to make it one page long. You just need to start somewhere. Once you've got it into place, then you can keep adding to it. You can implement it. You can test it. You can come back and refine it. Okay. So we have done a lot of training over the last few years, and this is how we get here. Um, the whole point of this is to help you wrap your head around your system and how you are going to do it in your business. So back to the system for the system. Um, I have this to be a thought experiment for you. I do want you to actually type it in or write it down or whatever. Um, again, this will be in the group. So we're going to start by thinking of the perfect job, the perfect client, the perfect job. So the it's an easy one. It's dirty, but not too dirty. They clean up for you, but there's some stuff in the way. There's no kids running around and the client isn't home and it's a recurring job. OK, we all want recurring jobs. OK, so when you have visualized that job and you're ready to walk yourself through it mentally. Um, 
then we're ready to start. First, we're going to write down all the products that you use. We're not talking vacuums and stuff. We're talking about what's your spray cleaner, what's your floor cleaner, what's your soft scrub, or whatever it is that you use, okay? And then write down what you use it for, okay? So us, we don't have very much. We have our liquid cleaner. We have baking soda, borax, pumice. That's really about it, I guess. Uh, I think we have some barkeeper's friend in there now and stuff like that um okay so go through this stuff once you've already gone through everything then i want you to come back and do it again because that's the thing with systems you're not going to be able to do it just once at least i can't i need to do it a few times which is why <laughs> i've got two systems for you to go through okay let's see here so and then you're going to go through your equipment list okay things that you need to know about like um make sure you always have that third plug on your vacuum and if you don't have one you need to let someone know otherwise you could burn a client's house down so stuff like that put that stuff in um sorry after you've gone through the list do as i say not as i do um okay so in your system for training you also need to make sure that your new trainees know everything that is going to be expected from them not just like how to clean a house it's what do how do i start my day okay so are they going to be starting at the office do they just go from their house to the job i don't know how do you do it in your business tell me about it here um is there anything else that they should be doing before they enter the client's home um where do where should they be parking when do they clock in um how do they clock in uh, then here's the biggest one. You need to train your people really well on how to get into houses because there is nothing more time consuming, expensive, and annoying as someone who can't get into a client's house. So make sure that you or your admin or your VA or whoever it is, make sure that there is always job notes in whatever system you use for your employees to get what they need to know for the job, okay? Because they're not mind readers, they don't actually know all the clients like you do. You need to give them this information somewhere. Where do they find it? What is the hierarchy of thought for problem solving on this, okay? Where do they check first? Where do they check second, third, okay? What are all the places they need to check before they contact you for help, okay? So now we're in the home, that's great. Huge hurdle crossed. What are they going to start doing first? What do they do second, third, all the way on down until they have cleaned that entire house? Remember, we have our perfect house in our mind here. So for us, this is what I call our sequence. So, and for our sequence, we do cobwebs first, then we do kitchen, bathroom, dry rooms, floors, vacuum and mopping. That's how we clean every house in every order except for if the client is home. Anyway, but you get one except for every one exception for every rule. Um, okay, your order of business may be different, but I give you lots of space to write about it, okay? And not so hard once you're visualizing the perfect client. After you have done all this, then you can start thinking about the what ifs and your yeah buts and all that stuff for different service types or complicated clients or something, okay? The goal is to have a standard, a baseline, a perfect, okay? And then you can add in the weirdness from there. Okay. Uh, la -da -da. Okay, remember to think that you're writing this for a monkey. You're writing this to train a robot, more or less, okay? If you've ever done any, like, coding, I have done a little bit of HTML. Um, but not enough to actually know anything. But I do a lot of like automations building, which is a lot of, if this happens, then do this. But if this happens, then do that. Um, so I tend to do think that way now. I did not before, but I've trained my brain to think that way. Okay, so back to what I was talking about. You need to be able to have a system written down so that your new hires can look at it and refer to it and know that's how this is done, okay? There's no real exceptions to it unless it's, 
you, you want to have the consistency. Employees love having those boundaries and clients love having the consistency because that's the goal is to be able to send any employee to any job and for the clients not to realize necessarily that it was a different person every time. They'll know because you tell them because you're a good, good service provider like that. But anyway, so do this for the, the your main service type and then feel free to go back through and do it for your different service types. Um, so me, one of my things that I did to help scale my business was I simplified everything. We have two service types. We do recurring cleaning and we do deep cleaning to start recurring service. So that's all we do. So with our two service types, it makes it pretty easy to train employees because you train them on recurring. And then you're like, oh, but this is the first time we're there. So we do these little extra things for the deep clean. It's just adding a few things. Okay, so copy and paste your answers from number six on the next page. Okay, now you have to define the quality, what it looks like, what does the final product look like for your employees. You told them what to do, and you're telling them how to do it. And now you're telling them it needs to look like this. Okay, how do you fold your towels? How do you fold, do you fold, do you fold your toilet paper? I don't know. How do you make beds? Do you fold the flat sheet back over the comforter or do you fold it back and then put the comforter over the top? How do you put comforters on? Do you do the flat, flat, flat method or do you do more of the taquito burrito roll? I don't know, you need to write this down and train your employees on it. Okay, now here's where things get really interesting put a time next to everything everything should have an acceptable amount of time this is where when they get halfway through the task if they're not halfway through that time that you can be like come on pick up the pace this is so that you're not getting antsy at someone when they are actually doing a good job you need to define for yourself and for them how long things are allowed to take it's okay if it goes faster but it's not okay if it goes slower you can go this fast or faster, that's it. Okay, it doesn't matter if you get the right numbers the first time, I guess. I guessed for mine, and then I put it out to my employees to start timing themselves, like how long does a bedroom take? How long does making the bed take? How long does taking out the trash take? You know, get numbers and times for these things. Okay, so when you do this, this is going to set you free. This is your other system, okay? You just wrote another system. So this is, how you're going to estimate jobs. This is how you're gonna price jobs. This is how you're going to time jobs. It may be the case that you need to go back through your current clients and their jobs and stuff and make them longer. You need to give your employees the time that they need to get the job done, okay? You can't be rushing them all the time. You can't have a job that's like two hours but should be three and expect them to get it done in two because that's just an unrealistic expectation, especially for new hires. And you're going to just crush their little souls and no one's gonna be having any fun and they're gonna leave you and then you're stuck hiring and training again. And it's expensive. Okay. So, okay, add some KPIs to this. My favorite KPIs are quality score of trainer, trainees, Okay, so they need to be at a 3.6 out of 4 by their first 30 days or four weeks. Um, we do use quality-driven software to send the survey email after every job. Um, we do expect a 50% feedback response rate because in my book, no news is bad news. And if, we, if they have lower than that, I send my VA on them to start cl calling clients to be like, haven't heard from you. How did Becky do? Okay, so... I do give them time expectations and I do expect them to go over them while they're fresh and they're they're new and they're just working it out. Um, so they get 30 days of grace. After that, we start getting on their case a little bit harder. For yourself, even though you have this super awesome training program that you're gonna write and implement, expect people to drop out of it still, okay? One, you're refining your system and two, it's also about who you hire. So for us, we expect 50% of new hires not to make it. So we're either going to fire them or they're going to quit and within the first three days. If it goes four days or longer, I'm like, 
I get on my field manager basically being like, this is getting expensive. Okay. And she knows she's, she's really gotten to be a good hard ass. I like her anyway. So, and I guess that's it for that system. So, but now that you've done all this, remember I had all this extra stuff up here. You've thought about it. Go refine it. Add your exceptions, add your what ifs and your yeah buts and all that other stuff. Throw that in there. Baby's waking up, so hopefully I can get this done. Um, and then there's this other one. This is kind of walking you through the same thing. Um, anyway, so products list and write where you use it. Two, put your equipment in. Step three, start of day procedure. And then also, what do you do between jobs? I didn't put that in the other one. But you know what? You can think, you can write that down too. Um, four, how do they get in? Five, the order of business. Let's see here. What else have we got? I did this in 10 steps. I was really excited about that. Okay. Um, do you have a flow or a pattern that you're noticing about your stuff? You need to give a summary. So that's like my cobwebs kitchen bathroom bedroom well it's cobwebs kitchen bathroom dry rooms anything without a sink floors that's my short summary longer summary you can make up um and then what does quality look like what does it look like when it's done well hey baby you're okay i'm sorry i'll be right with you i'm almost done here okay so, and your reasonable time expectations, put those in. Step nine, you get to add your exceptions here, okay? And this will all update with whatever you have, you put in for the earlier steps. And then number 10, take everything and break it down into however long your training is going to be, minus 10 days. So you can do 10 days, you can do 20 days. I don't know, it's your system. Um, and then write out what they need to be told, what the training needs to be told, and make sure that they know it. So write yourself a little quiz or something. Um, yes, and then your KPIs and whatever else. Do that for yourself. Okay, back to wrapping this up here. So that's what I've got for you, and I hope it has been helpful. I know I talk really fast, and I threw a lot of information at you. Um, watch this a few times, maybe. Go through my exercise things that I wrote up real quick for you. It'll help you think at least. I know Finn. Okay. I just want you to help grab, understand, grasp the concept of a system and how a system works and how, what you need to do to make it work in your business. Um, so you're, you're going to do this. With this dealio, I am giving away one hour of time to three people. I can, I'm more than happy to help you work on your systems and figure out what you need to know. Um, and join the automatic mastermind group. I'm going to talk about systems and the links to the step-by-step -step documents and <laughs> training video will be there. So super fun. And yeah, I'm glad you've made it this far. You're really dedicated to your business and you're going to do this. You're going to do a fantastic job.